to be clear, I'll take his call at three in the morning. The rest of you have to work towards that. It takes a while to build up to that. All right, hey, good morning. This is not intimidating at all. Um, so we're gonna talk about page builders. Uh, Jennifer wouldn't tell you what her page, favorite page builder is, I promise, I will. Um, so we'll get to that in just a little bit. But there's a whole bunch of different page builders out there and so this particular talk, what I'm really gonna show you is um, I built a lot of websites and the idea of one of my favorite things about page builders is that they kind of let you do things and get things set up in a way to where you can kind of get past a lot of the minutia crap and get into actually working on the website and adding content and things like that quickly. And so that's what we're gonna talk about. So I am gonna talk about uh, a couple of different plugins, uh, page builders and whatnot, and so we'll, we'll kind of go through it. But first, so what the heck is a page builder? So typically a page builder is going to be either a plugin or it's gonna be a plugin and theme combo. Some themes have a page builder already wrapped into it. But by and large, what a page builder is, it's some sort of a drag and drop front end editor for WordPress, okay? By the way, I also love questions, so if you have any, just throw them up at any time. So let's take a look at some sites that were built with different page builders, and I'm gonna go through four here. So this is a site called CHSI Connections. Uh, you can check it out, chsiconnections.com. And this one right here uses WP Bakery, which is formerly uh, Visual Composer. It's available at codecanyon.net. Um, I'm not a big fan of it. I, I work on this site for this client, and whoever built it for them, uh, when they handed it off, the client is now afraid to touch anything because every time they touch anything, something breaks every single time. And I will tell you, I've actually been working, I've used Visual Composer for years, and the way that this particular site is set up, it feels like a house of cards. And so I do have a staging site for it, and even if I am only going to change a color and a background in a box, I will do it on staging because invariably something breaks and I have to just be super, super careful. Um, not that the client is a pain in the ass, just I don't like to be the guy that screws stuff up on their site. So um, there are 300,000 plus sales of the Visual Composer plugin. So somewhere folks are having really good luck with it. I just haven't met those people. So that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. I just don't know the, the, the right people. So. Uh, this is a site called uh, Globe Salon. It's a local hair salon in um, Las Vegas. I built a site for them. And for this one, we used Divi. This one comes from Elegant Themes. Way back in the day, Divi was kind of built into their themes, and now they've kind of broken it out, and it's its own separate thing. So it's a separate plugin, and you could, if you have a particular theme that you really like and you want to use that theme, you can bring Divi right along in there with it. Um, that site is mainly what you would consider to be a, like a postcard, business card site, very static. They do have a blog. Um, Divi, Divi was very, very close to being my all-in page builder. And if you decide to go with Divi as your page builder, you're gonna be perfectly happy with it. All of the page builders, the way that they work and the way that you work in them, is all gonna be very similar. You're gonna do things very, very similar no matter which one you actually end up choosing. So uh, Divi was very close. It didn't end up being the one that I um, went with and I'll explain why in a little bit. So we'll, we'll just come back to that. Uh, Team Infinite, this is uh, teaminfinite.global if you wanna check it out. Uh, this one, um, and I, I'm sharing this one because I, I'll, I'll get to, to what, this one was built using Elementor. Anybody use Elementor? Yeah, so the people that use Elementor flippin' love it. Like, it's great. I have messed with it a little bit, but I haven't had a project where I've actually built and launched a site using Elementor. Not because I don't want to, it just hasn't happened. Um, but I will tell you that the people that use it just swear by it. Uh, the, the why I, this would probably be uh, either my second or third or real close to, to which one I would choose to go with. But, and the reason is uh, Alex King, the guy who built this site, Team Infinite, um, 
he speaks in our uh, WordPress Vegas meetup, and he's shown off a bunch of different sites that he's built. They're absolutely gorgeous. They, they're, he can build complex things with lots of tools. Hey, man, how's it going back there? I see you. Good to see you. Um, and he'll tell you that he doesn't write a line of code, doesn't do any PHP. He says he doesn't even know CSS, and the stuff that he builds is just absolutely gorgeous. So, I mean, tells me that the page builder can do some pretty strong stuff without getting under the hood. But if you haven't been playing along, following along with the ones we've been talking about and what's left, so this is the fourth one. This is a site I recently built. It's called Aquatic Pros. Uh, this is probably one of the most complex sites I've ever built. It has EDD installed and uh, Restrict Content Pro. It's got uh, gravity forms. We do some crazy stuff pushing off the stripe through gravity. It's ridiculously complicated for a uh, nonprofit organization, but all of the different things that they do and the different things they sell, holy crap. Um, it was built in Beaver Builder. And I will tell you right now, this is the one I picked. And now if you ask me why I picked this one, um, it's not because I think Beaver, Beaver Builder is the best. I picked this one because folks that I know and folks that I can call at 3 a.m., Jeff is one of those guys, uh, also use Beaver Builder. So if I were picking, I would probably say Divi, Elementor, Beaver Builder are all right there on par, because they're all gonna do what you need to do. All of these can be used with any, um, pretty much any theme. Um, I think Team Infinite, I think they used um, Astra. Astra is like a super popular one for page builders. There's another one called Ocean WP. Beaver Builder has their own, and that's actually what I use. It's just because it's right there, and it's already built in. But, um, oh, sorry, I jumped ahead, whoops. Um, but, so whichever one you pick, you're gonna be fine. But now, here we go, the big question. So, page builders, what about Gutenberg? Um, page builders are typically a front-end editor. You're gonna do most of your editing and, and code functionality, uh, you know, dragging and dropping all this stuff. That's all gonna happen on the front end, where Gutenberg is more of a back-end editor and really only messes with that one main content block. It's not gonna mess with everything else. It may down the line, but for the iteration that we're going to be uh, dealing with shortly, um, that's, that's the difference. So for me, what I have noticed is that, and I've tested this, you can have Gutenberg installed on a site that has a page builder and you can edit the content in the back end if you've got those types of pages. What ends up happening is it ends up becoming an either or. So you can see right here, this is an example of what my list of pages on my test site here looks like. And I created that privacy policy and I'm editing that in the back end using Gutenberg. Well, the little thing tells me that this particular page was built, built with Gutenberg. Great. I know not to try to mess with that one on the front end with Beaver Builder. All right, that's pretty easy to avoid, right? So that's it. Front end, front end editor versus back end editor. So um, I will tell you, with I haven't tested it in about a month, but Visual Composer plus Gutenberg right now sort of looks like the apocalypse. Um, <laughs> when you install, and I, I really should have taken a screenshot of this, um, that CHSI connections, I have it running local, and I'm like, let's just see what happens. How bad could it possibly be? The entire left-hand side of the screen ends up being code, and you can't click on anything. But other than that, it works great. <laughs> Oddly enough, even when I activated Gutenberg and the admin was just a complete shit show, the front end of the site worked totally fine. I just couldn't really edit anything in the back, so. Why did you do your privacy policy on Gutenberg and then everything else on the front end? Well, I wouldn't, but you can. And coming up very shortly, you're going to, sorry, yeah, her question was, I was supposed to repeat that, wasn't I? The question is, why would I edit the privacy policy in Gutenberg and do the rest on the other end? And I said I wouldn't, because it was funny. Um, but really, the, the idea is if I build, and I'm gonna show this just in a few minutes, if I build a template 
where it's going to just be like static content and then like maybe a sidebar down the side. I don't need to use all of the fancy drag and drop functionality of a page builder to go do that. I can create a, a static template and then let the client just go into the admin that they're already comfortable using and going in adding just text content or text with a, a simple graphic. So in that particular case, you would use the backend editor or Gutenberg as it, as it were. So that's why. So. All right, so page builder advantages. Um, using a single tool to build a lot of different looking sites and getting very, very familiar with one tool. So every single thing that you learn, you get to carry that on to the next thing that you learn. So um, I was gonna say that you can use a page builder with any theme, but as soon as I say any theme, somebody goes, oh, well, it doesn't work with this theme. So I put, it'll work with most themes. Um, Quick access to a whole lot of different templates. Uh, every single one of the page builders that I've talked about, they've got either a theme pack or they come standard with a, with a handful of existing templates. Um, and I, I think I used the word themes a second ago. I mean templates, and they're two different things. But um, <laughs> yeah, so you can get, I'm not going to read every single one of those bullet points. They're up there. We'll, we'll make the slides available. Um, disadvantages. Um, there's usually at least three ways to do every single thing that you want to do. That may sound like a really cool thing. Great, there's three ways I can do that. No, it's not. Let me explain. Um, you, you build site A and you make this widget this way. And then a month later you go, oh, I found this new way that I'm going to do it. And so you do the exact same thing, but you do it slightly different. And then you do it slightly different on the next one, and then you do it slightly different on the next one. And when you have to go back and fix or work on that first guy's site, you're like, who the hell built this? And why did they do it this way? Um, that can be very, very frustrating. I find it very frustrating. And so I left my water. There it is. Um, so disadvantage. Um, the, the last one is probably my favorite, which is once you get familiar with a page builder, you're going to want to go back and rebuild every single site that you've ever built because you're like, I'm not going to just use that other thing anymore. That was ridiculous. Why did I ever do it that way? All right. So which one should you use? Which one do your friends use? Which one do your colleagues use? This is the one that I would pick. Go and take a look at what add-ons they've got, theme packs. Um, there's other people now building like third-party add-ons for all of these different ones. Figure out which ones has the things that you like and the ones that get kind of closest. But honestly, three out of the four. It doesn't work. You can't do this with Visual Composer because Visual Composer is sold through um, Code Canyon and they don't allow... Uh, refunds unless stuff is like completely broken. But from a strict try, buy and try, Divi, Elegant Themes, and uh, and Beaver Builder, you can purchase them and you can run the entire full thing for 30 days. And if you don't like it, they'll give you your money back. They are awesome. <laughs> True. He said the uh, free and uh, trial versions of uh, Beaver Builder and Divi. Elementor, yeah, are are amazing, and that is true. Yeah, I mean, and you so you you might not even have to spend any money to even try them, um, but if you did, it's risk free. So why wouldn't you? Um, but honestly, it's that first bullet point. Which one is going to have that ability for you to turn to the guy next to you or make a quick call on on Slack saying, "Hey, man, I can't figure this thing out," and Jeff will get on the phone with you and. Show you how to do it. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> ah, yeah. Pick one and stick with it. This is the other thing, which is, if, if you're gonna get, if you're gonna really kind of get it, I, there's nothing wrong with trying a couple of them and figuring out which one you like. But just like you do with WordPress, like once you dove into WordPress, you're no longer like building a WordPress site and then a Drupal site and then a Joomla site and then hand coding one and then going back to WordPress. You're not doing that. What you're doing is you're building a WordPress site then you're building another WordPress site and then another one and another one and another one. And why are you doing that? First off, because it's really good. Second off, because every single time that you build a site, you learn something new. 
and you get to carry that knowledge forward into the next project that you do, making the next project hopefully more profitable for you, better for you, quicker, all of those things. So all of those things that you learned, you get to carry them along, they become part of your tool bag and you know how to do them. And you don't do that thing where you do it 14 different ways every single time. So you should be able to kind of carry that forward. So my suggestion, pick one and stick with it, learn it deeply. All right, for me, this is the one I chose, Beaver Builder. You probably, I think I probably, this was supposed to be like a huge reveal. Ba -ba -ba. Such a great logo. Um, and I, like I said, Divi for me was super close. And I, had, when I built that Globe Salon site, I went out and I bought every third-party add-on that I could find for Divi, and I was gonna dive in. And then the folks at work are like, "Hey, we're gonna start doing this thing, and we're gonna use Beaver Builder." And I'm like, "Okay." So <laughs> picked up Beaver Builder, and I found out, man, it works almost identical to the way that Divi does. Um, super simple, quick to learn, lots of available resources, big community of folks, and that's one of the great things. All of the ones that we've talked about today, they all have these really super great communities. So if you can't figure something out, Google is your friend. Um, there's good Facebook groups for them as well. Um, and you can run into a lot of the guys uh, at WordCamps. I think um, the Beaver Builder guys are here this week. To a lot of, oh, I didn't even know that. <laughs> <laughs> when, Speaking of the beach ball. <laughs> when, when looking up themes, I always run into, the, there's so many, it seems like all of the ones I run into are visual composer. Mm -hmm. um, is there a way I can say Elementor, if I use Elementor on those, will it just go crazy or it, it depends? It definitely depends, for sure. Um, you know, the so Visual Composer isn't a theme, right? That, I mean, Visual Composer is an add-on to yeah. a theme. Yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, if it's me in a site, like if there was a theme that was like already kind of custom built and it like maybe baked uh, Visual Composer right into it, I'd probably choose a different one, and the only reason I would do that is because Visual Composer is going to load a whole bunch of JavaScript, and it's going to hold, it's going to load a whole bunch of different resources that you don't need both of them on there. Because all that's going to really do is just your chances of conflict are are higher. Okay. So if it was me, I would probably pick a theme, like I said, Astra, Ocean. Uh, WP. Gosh. Those two are are super popular. Um, the Beaver Builder theme is great in that it, uh, especially if you are gonna use Beaver Builder, but it's great in that it kind of gets out of the way and does very, it, it's a minimalist theme. Gotcha. So you can kind of use a page builder and then have free reign to do whatever the heck you want. Gotcha. So that, that is, I mean, that's probably one of my least favorite things about going to Theme Forest is all of the themes that I find there, they try to be everything to everyone because they, they, they want to be able to say, oh, we've got 500 different this and we've got 800 different that. And you can build every single site under the sun using this one thing because we've built everything into it. All right, but what if I only need this much? Yeah. Like, I, you know, it's just you don't want to carry all of that weight going into, into a project. Gotcha. So, Thank you. Less is probably more. All right, so let's go have some fun. So I can't wait to see how this works. So uh, I made a whole bunch of gifts here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through basically the process that I go through to start a project. Uh, and it's I do it almost all of the time, almost all of the time. So start with a style guide. Oh, you know what? That's actually one of the biggest disadvantages, and I didn't talk about it. It is one of the bullet points, so you might have read it. But... Page builders give folks the false sense that they are a designer. Um, I am not a designer. <laughs> I will not design for you. You're welcome. I draw stick figures poorly. Um, just be careful when you're doing that. Um, so we do. We start all of our projects with a style guide. I don't create those style guides. I let somebody else do that. Or if I am doing it, I'm taking them and I'm running them by other folks. So. I'm making sure that somebody with a designer's eye is taking a look at the project. So I start with a style guide. 
Um, I define the colors. What colors are we going to use? What fonts are we going to use? What, what's the text size? What's the spacing? Um, I am going to break out of here for just a second, and we will hop into, because I just happen to have one. I know, magic. This is the style guide that we use at eWebscapes, and it is super simple. And so when I talk about building, starting with a style guide, I'm not saying you need to give up an entire week to building a style guide. I want to know what colors are we going to use? So here's the different text colors that we're going to use. And then here are the primary colors that we've got for the site. So you typically you can tell this is a button and then that's the button overlay or, and then these are the, the hover states and things like that. So we define the colors. Then we come down and we define what the headings are going to look like, the font sizes, et cetera. Um, if we're going to do anything special, like, okay, once you get down to the, the five and the six, they're going to be all caps, this type of letter spacing, et cetera. But very easily, like at the end, oh yeah, and I go just a little bit further and I define what the buttons are going to look like. What are the buttons going to look like on a white background? How about on a blue background? Or uh, actually, I want to change this one. And I want to put like a, a photo as the background. Like, what does a button look like if it's got a photo as a background? You don't need to do a heck of a lot, but if you have this as a starting point, you can always refer back to it. And little tip here, you hand this off to your client at the end, you go, oh, by the way, here you go, here's your style guide. They're like, oh, that's awesome, all right. Now, everyone always worries, you hand off, hand off a project to a client, what are they gonna do? They're gonna go screw it up. Then you don't wanna ever send anybody to it because they screwed up your site. Um, but this is a great way, and, and clients absolutely love it. And I probably spend somewhere between 30 and 60 minutes putting that together. You should have already gotten all the answers to what you're going to do from your design conversations. All you're doing is writing it down in something semi-fancy. By the way, I use a, a program called Sketch for doing that. It is great. I am, again, not a designer, and Sketch is a fantastic little app for, uh, for building out those um, style guides. All right. Oh, yeah, that final bullet point. Keep it simple. All right, so next thing I do, I'm going to go and I'm going to install plugins in a theme. I install the Beaver Builder plugin. I have a um, pro-level license for Beaver, uh, Beaver Builder and for Beaver Themer. Um, Beaver Themer is an add-on plugin. It's a separate, by the way, every single product that I talked about today is a for-pay product. You will pay some money to, to get the, the pro versions of them, especially if you're going to be doing this and making money off of it. Pay those guys their money. Just pay them their money. Buy the most expensive thing because I promise you, you're coming out ahead. Um, and then I also install the Beaver Builder theme. I'm not going to walk you through how to do that. You already know how to do that. Once I do that, I have my style guide in hand. Then what I do, I hop into here, and we're going to see if this first one works. It does. I go into the, I go into the customizer. I have a page that I make that has all of the different font sizes, heading ones, a block of text, a block quote, some uh, bold, italics, bullet points, and I put all of that onto one page, and then I go through on the customizer, and I go through that entire list, and I go and I just make sure that everything looks like I'm picking the font, I choose the colors, da da da, all of that stuff through the customizer. And this, depending on the theme that you use, the customizer, the list of items down the left-hand side on the customizer can change drastically. So just be prepared to spend a little bit of time going through every single page on that uh, on the customizer. After I do that, the next thing that I do is I add colors to the color picker. So I've already got my style guide. So let me show you what this looks like. So I will take and I'll drop something like a heading onto the page. It's going to bring up a little item here and I go to the style. I'm going to pick a color. I'm going to type in that first color for my style guide. I'm going to click on that little plus over there on the right-hand side, and it's now added to my presets. I'm going to do the next one. Oh, come on. I couldn't type fast enough there, apparently. And the second one. Now, what happens from then on, every single time I want to use one down at the bottom, I now have that color list. Great part about this, when I hand this off to the client, all of those are now available. 
it's going to start over because that's what gifts do. Um, now, when the client gets this, when they get their hands on their website, all of those colors are pre-selected. So they're not down here trying to like match up that blue because that would not be a lot of fun, I don't think. So super simple, takes just a couple of minutes. You put those in there, and then you never have to worry about it again. All right, next up, I'm going to create a, a default header for the entire site. And this looks like going into Beaver Builder, and I am currently working... Um, this is actually part of Beaver Themer, where I'm creating what is going to be a, a default header for the entire site. So I, I want it to show the, the page title, and then I've got, I want to do a little something fancy with maybe a little separator here. And check this out. I'm going to go pick one of my pre-existing colors. Now I'm going to do some fancy stuff and act like I'm a designer. Look at me. Huh? Huh? Spacing? Yep. See that line? There it is. Yeah. Oh, that looks good. <laughs> Full width for sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Got to get rid of the background color. You can't really tell, but there is a that's gray on white, and we don't want that. We want white and white. This is a little longer than I thought it was. All right. So now what I've done is I've basically I've created that. And I'm going to hop back into the back end, which this is part of the beaver themer. Now that I've created that header, all I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it, I want this, <laughs> I want the location to be every page on the site, so the entire site, but I want to exclude it from the home page. So now, as we go to the front end of the site, I think this is going to happen in this demo. Oh, hot damn. Yeah. So you can see. The header is not there on the home page, but if I go to something like the About Us page, you can see there's my title and then there's that. Uh, uh, so what I've done is now basically every single time a page gets created, it's automatically going to have the exact look that I want. Um, uh, it was talked about in the previous session, um, the plugin Duplicate This. That's what I'm going to do next is now that I've done that, I need to create that header for what the home page is going to use because it's going to be a little bit different because you don't really want that little home, you know, and the little thing. that That's not the way your home page looks. Your home page is going to be a little bit more stylized. So actually, I'm going to just use the duplicate this plugin. I'm going to duplicate the internal header. Once I've got that, I'm going to give it a different name. I was going to do this as a live demo, and I'm like, that'll just never, that won't be fun. So I made a bunch of animated GIFs. This was a lot easier. It's a, a plugin called, or it's a tool called Lice App, L-I-C-E, or Lice Cap, L-I-C-E-C-A-P. Let's you create this, and they're super small GIFs. So all I've really done now is I've said, okay, I want you to create this other one, and I want this to only be on the home page. So now when I go to the front end of my site, oh yeah, I'm going to just take out that other thing, publish it, and you can see, like, if I go to my home page, no title row, and if I go to the About Us page, the title row is there. So super simple to do. I've created those two things, and we're, I, I'll do the exact same thing for the footer of the site as well. And then the next thing I do is I'm going to go and create that generic page. We were talking about it earlier uh, for, the, um, for the privacy policy page. So this one's a little bit fun. Um, I'm going to create a new template, and this is going to be for all of the singular pages. Um, and I'm going to tell it I want this to go on all singular. So this means like a, a single blog post or a, a single page. And this one's going to take just about 30 or 40 seconds here. But the by default, I don't want to use the header that it gave me, and I certainly don't want to use all of the content that it gave me. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just quickly drag in a new row. I want my I want a left hand side with a smaller right hand side, and I'm going to go grab a module the post content, and I'm going to just drag and drop that right in there. And it's going to pull in. Right now, it's looking at the Hello World example page. So it's, you'll see the Welcome to WordPress as the example. And then over on the right, I'm going to now, I want a sidebar. So I'm going to just grab the, uh, the sidebar layout item and drop that in there. It'll give me an example of what it's all going to look like. Oh, yeah, I need to choose. I want it to be the primary. So it shows that. It shows up. 
And then if I want to explain, or if I want to see an example of what this looks like, I could just quickly switch and go to that privacy policy page like we were talking about before. And now I get like the preview of what it looks like using the, the other. So now, the reason I do this is so that when I hand this off to the client, when they, when they go to create any content in the back end, I already know what that template page is going to look like. They can, we can do some fancy stuff with some of the page builder things, and we're gonna show that in just a second, but all of their basic blog post content, et cetera, are, we already know that it's gonna look good. They, they can't go and screw it up, hopefully, hopefully. All right, we're almost done here, okay. Oh, so why do I create a, create a sample? Oh, I already explained that. We're going to just move right on. Oh, so yeah, terms, yeah, yeah. We just talked about it. You don't need to know that again. You don't need to watch that video. You can watch it later. I'll make all of this stuff available so you guys can come back and you'll be building sites in 20 minutes in no time. Um, next up, and this is probably the absolute 100%, this is the reason why you use a page builder. Um, I love to create reusable rows and modules. So if you have something that you know is going to be scattered throughout the site and you want it to always look the same and you don't want to have to rebuild it time and time and time again, I'm going to show you what I do here. So this is a row that I'm working on. This is like a call to action. Um, so I've already, I've already put an image in there and I've kind of put some stuff. I'm going to do a quick little call to action button. So. I decide what I want this thing to look like. Take me just a second here. So the way that this works is once I actually create this and once I get this row looking exactly how I want it to look, I'm going to be able to save it and make it available as part of a dropdown. So any single time somebody wants to use that, they'll be able to drag and drop that tool in. So I'm going to, oh yeah, I didn't quite like it with the blue. Let's change it to one of their to their green. Again, I'm not a designer. We talked about that already. So there you go. There's my amazing call to action. Um, but now that I've done that, I just go into the row settings and I do a save as, and I call this the let's build something amazing row. And now I have that little checkbox right there, which is global, yes or no. If I say yes, that means if I add that on 100 different pages and I go, oh shoot, there's a typo in there, I wanna make a change. If it's global, I can open that up, make that change one time, and it'll update all 100 pages. If it's not global, a lot of times I'll, you, you might build something like this as a starting point. I know I want this thing to look basically this way. I've already fixed all of the padding and the margins and the spacing and all of that stuff. But you could drop that on a page have that in there and then make it available for your client to just go in there, double click, and then just change the wording. So global versus non-global, um, it really just depends on, on your use case for that particular thing. But in this particular one, I've created this as that entire row, and so that row is saved and used. Um, and I'm gonna show what it looks like here. Um, this is what it looks like using one of those rows. So I've got that contact page, and I had that call to action. I'm gonna bring up the contact page, I'm gonna scroll down, I'm gonna say, ah, that's it. I want that call to action to go right in here. I just go to the saved menu, and I'm gonna drag and drop that item, and there you go. They can't screw it up. Nice, right? So, all right, we're almost done here. Uh, Pre-existing templates, this is a good one. So, the contact us page. This is a great one where I'm gonna hop quickly into um, into it, it's gonna say, hey, by the way, this was using a template before, are you sure you wanna? Yes, I'm sure. I told you a lot of these already come with a whole bunch. Here is just, um, this is Beaver Builder. has a whole bunch of these pre-existing templates. I'm gonna scroll down until I find a contact us page that I like. That's the one. And it's gonna leave my header stuff and then it's gonna drop a whole bunch of content in here. I can now just click on these and edit it and, and put in the content for what I need. So this is a five minute solution to rather than having to build everything from scratch. I have four minutes and I have two slides. All right, that's it. Like that's really about all there is to it. At this particular point, you're ready to just kind of go and add content. Um, there's obviously more to it. I mean, this is, I, I, we didn't build a site in 45 minutes, although you could probably get really close. Uh, we have four minutes. Whew. 
that was a lot of talking. Um, I'm not going anywhere. I'll be here all day. Don't forget, you're all supposed to come find me and we will take selfies. And if you have any questions about any of the page builders, it doesn't have to just be about um, Beaver Builder. I'm happy to talk about all of them. And I have my site, the site that I was working on. I have it local here, so we can actually kick the tires and mess with it. I saw your hand go up. <laughs> It's a great question. It does not. Could the content that actually question? goes straight. Oh, uh, man. The, uh, by the time, like in an hour, I'll have this nailed. We're ready. Uh, the question was if you uninstall Beaver Builder, does it like leave a whole bunch of like short codes and things like that? And the answer is no, it doesn't. It'll leave the content. You're going to have to go and reformat it because. Well, you're going to have to, but it doesn't. It, it, it does a nice job of kind of cleaning up after itself. And I think Divi does the same. Uh, I'm not sure about Elementor. Maybe, maybe oh, it's Elementor. Elementor and, uh, and Beaver Builder don't. The other ones I'm not so sure about. In part because I'm wearing a Micro Format shirt, I have to ask, if I want to go in and inject something into Beaver So the question is, can you add semantic code into the blocks? Don't know. We're going to look it up. We'll look it up after. How's that? Hi. For whatever it's worth, I use Site Origin, which is very, it's very minimalistic, similar to Beaver Builder. Mm -hmm. Many people use it. Um, I was curious to know about page load speed, uh, whether you know or anyone in the room has ever compared with the same theme, different uh, page builders. And can so about page load speed, there is. Um, who was it? It was Pippin. Pippin did a great yeah. post a while back where he dug super deep into a lot of the, uh, the different page builders. And I believe he covers page speed. Um, page speed is not always about the tool that you're using, but it's about a whole bunch of other things like where you're hosted and are you, you, know, are you using caching? Are you using Cloudflare for DNS? And there's a whole bunch of other pieces that kind of go into it. Um, so comparing one to the other and, you know, depending on the content and or did you, did you put a five megabyte image as your hero image, um, which my clients love doing that. I don't know why that is, uh, but one to the other, I haven't really seen like a drastic, oh my God, this, like building the same page this, to that. I haven't seen a huge difference, um, but it, I think there, there's so much more that goes into that mixture than just how's, how's it going. Last question. Yeah, uh, actually, yeah, three quick questions. Nope. Um, does <laughs> if you uh, inherited a, a site from someone else, and uh, is there a way to find out um, what theme was used or what page builder was used? So that's one. Secondly, does uh, Beaver Builder have uh, tutorials? And third, if I'm building a number of sites um, using Beaver Builder, uh, do I need to pay? Um, is essentially Beaver Builder for each site. So I'm going to answer those in reverse order. Um, if you buy the either pro or agency version of Beaver Builder, they come with unlimited sites. Um, so there's that one. Uh, the second one, if, you, uh, if you're on a website, if, if you're in Chrome, you can right click and choose, um, I'm sorry, control U or command option U and then do a search for WP or for themes. So right after the word themes, I can see that this is using a theme called BB theme. So this is kind of the first way of how I would go about figuring out what theme it's using. And then um, from that I can, um, as far as what, uh, which page builder, every one of the page builders kind of have different little chunks of code. Um, I don't have a list to tell you this one equals that and that one equals that, but it's not going to be too terribly difficult. And there is a site, a website called Built With, builtwith.com. You can go in there, type in the URL for the site that you want, and it'll give you a whole lot of extra information that you didn't know. I told you that was the last question. Thank you all for coming. I'm here all day. Let's chat.